Hello, my name is Yejun Hong. I'm a medical student in the University of Calgary, and our team is here to explain MERRF, or mild clotting epilepsy and ragged red fibers, which is one type of CPEO. Ophthalmology and neurology are very closely linked uh, specialties. The eye is a sensory organ responsible for perceiving light and it is directly linked to the nervous system. The eyes are very closely positioned to the brain as well. So if anything was to happen to the brain, for example, increased intracranial pressure, the eyes uh, would be directly affected. The eyes are also innervated by four out of 12 cranial nerves, two, three, four, and six, and the retina, the innermost layer of the eye, has a neurosensory layer that becomes the optic nerve as it exits the eye. One disease that demonstrates this link between the two specialties is MERRF. This is a type of CPEO, or chronic progressive external ophthalmoplegia, with spasticity, dementia, and ataxia. So as, as we've said, MERRF is CPEO with mitochondrial DNA disorder. This disease appears in childhood or adolescence, and it slowly progresses, uh, progresses and uh, presents with bilateral ophthalmoplegia that affects all directions of gaze. More than 80% of this disease is caused by mutations in the MTTK gene in the mitochondria. Symptoms of MERRF include myoclonus and seizures and ataxia, dementia dysarthria, hearing loss, decreased vision, droopy eyelids, tearing up, and foreign body sensation. So half of them are related to ophthalmologic presentations and there are also a lot of neurological uh, signs as well. Upon examination, you will notice the CPEO in an MERF patient. Upon a full neurologic exam, you would also notice ataxia, spasticity, dementia, and dysarthria. Um, and with the <coughs> fundus exam, you may notice optic neuropathy, nystagmus can also be noticed, on uh, I, the extraocular movement tests, short stature uh, may be noted, as well as hearing loss. Visual acuity may be diminished, and as mentioned before, uh, extraocular movements may be limited as well. Uh, ptosis or drooping of the upper eyelids uh, may present, and orbicularis ocular weakness, superficial punctic keratitis, and RPE changes may be noted too. Differential diagnosis includes the up gaze and down gaze palsies, progressive supranuclear palsies for uh, patients with Parkinsonism uh, symptoms, dorsal midbrain syndrome, and myasthenia gravis. For uh, these patients, do a complete ophthalmic history, pay attention to uh, and conduct uh, cranial nerves exam uh, and comprehensive neurologic exam, uh, perform visual acuity, measure if they have diminished, extraocular movements to see the progression of the CPEO, and pay attention to the lids and pupils as well. Lab orders may include mitochondrial DNA analysis from the blood samples, muscle biopsy from the thigh or the deltoid, and abnormal ragged red muscle fibers or electromyography would verify that uh, the patient has MERRF. To rule out myasthenia gravis, uh, order anti-acetylcholine receptor antibody test and ISPEC test as well. Uh, we can do a lumbar puncture to see if CNS processes are suspected Treatment of MERRF is basically topical lubrication and 
This uses artificial tears every hour and ointment before going to bed. These are to prevent exposure keratopathy. For severe ptosis that uh, significantly affects everyday functions, we could consider surgery to eliminate ptosis as well. So this is a summary of everything we talked about in myoclonic epilepsy and ragged red fibers. And here is the reference from which we pull the information necessary for this presentation. Thank you for watching this video.